my father and Jerome, Mr. Mason, when I talked to him, he told me to say that every time I get up. I remember for the most part, he said, Pastor, say that every time you get up. Thank God for his life. I thank God that he was able to talk about 20 minutes on the phone. It was Friday, I think it was. Pray for his health and strength. But in Matthew the eighth chapter, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Let me go on reading. And when Jesus came down from the mountain, okay, I just said that in the fifth and the sixth verse. When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. This is the NIV version. Jesus yes. reached out his hand and touched the man and said, I am willing. He said, be clean. Immediately, he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. See, yes. I want y'all to see this. That You see, when Jesus touched him, which instead of Jesus being uncleansed or whatever you might have thought Jesus had on him. Jesus cleansed that man totally. He was a leper for God's sake. And when we see about often wonder why Jesus said tell no man, in the King James Version it says, thou tell no man. The purpose of Jesus is giving this command was to call attention away from the miracle itself and to appeal to the spiritual need in the man. It was clear in the gospel accounts that the crowd were often attracted, Vincent, by Jesus' miracles, not all the time by his message. Y'all not saying nothing. Amen. Know the Jones? You know how we are? Let some let y'all hear about somebody to raise somebody from the dead. That's about all y'all going over there. <laughs> Just see. They heard about Jesus' miracles. We're going to see. Now so much more here. We're going, we're going to see. Because science is one that it fantasizes people. Yes. It attracts. I guarantee you, if I raise somebody from the dead in this church, Kenneth, this church will be packed next Sunday. <laughs> You see, somebody said, I ain't dead, but I, 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 I got cancer. Can you heal it? You raised people from the dead over here. Y'all ain't saying mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Thank you. See, that's what it was. See, you got to know about him work, and then I'm going to get into, I've seen him work. Y'all, y'all, y'all better get ready. Y'all better get ready. Huh? Then, then we go on down to the faith of centurion. I'm still in the same chapter where Jesus entered Capernaum, a certain, a central. A centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said unto him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Whoa, what about that faith? For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes. I tell this one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and he does that. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, truly, I tell you I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Uh -huh. I, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. So often see it. Jesus didn't tell him right away. Well, why Jesus go in there and saying all that, Mother Jesus? <laughs> Somebody might even say, what they got to do with it? Heal the man, Jesus. Let's move on. Y'all know how impatient we are. Somebody said, Oh, we've been gassed. You what they got to do with it? I don't want to be healed. I want y'all to really understand that. And really see what's going on there. I'm not gonna say no more. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go. Let it be done just as you believed it would. 
I'm sure yeah. you know the difference. How Jesus talked, how he healed everybody. It was a certain difference in that. He told the other man, if you're willing, I'm willing to be healed. Now he's telling sincerity, just because the way you believe, it will happen because of your belief. See, if you don't believe you're going to get healed, you ain't getting healed. I don't care who's standing up here. Amen. Amen. Let it be done, just as you believed it would. And the servant was healed at that moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 14 verse. When Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on him. How many of y'all know they know something totally different? Right after Jesus healed this woman, she got up and waited on him. She didn't get up and go outside and go to the grocery store. Uh-oh. She don't mind telling her. She got up and waited on Jesus after she was delivered from a fever. She didn't ask nothing. He didn't say nothing. He touched her and the fever left. And she got up and attended to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 When evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The cost of following Christ. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Uh-oh. You better watch what you say. Tasha, yeah. Tasha. Yeah. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of God has no place to lay his head. Watch out. He didn't have an address. He didn't have a home. Jesus was homeless. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's all right. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Yeah. Nobody in this answer. <laughs> They all gonna get you in. You ain't Jesus. <laughs> I'm busy doing God's work. Let the, let the dead bury the dead. See there, you ain't right. <laughs> we can't follow example of the Bible. Who, what we follow? Amen. Amen. What we do? We talk about we want to be Christ like. We want to be a Christian. Mm. Food for thought. I'm going on. Y'all following with me. I'm down to the 23rd verse in the 8th chapter. Huh? Let you see after Jesus preached for three chapters, he bet. Now he's going on healing and set free and delivered. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to let. Hey, have anybody seen him work? Have anybody seen Christ work in their life? Have anybody Man. seen him work? Man. Hallelujah. Then he got into a boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake. So that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. Mm. The disciples really woke him up saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. <laughs> Jesus replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? What manner of man is this? What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves and the sea obey him. Mm -hmm. At that point, Mother Deuce, you ought to know who you was dealing with. You ought to know what Christ was all about. You was following him. You see all those miracles of those folk that you was with. And now you have no faith to tell the wind and the waves to be calm. Mm. I told you, when you're saved, sanctified, filled with God's Holy Ghost, you got the authority to command evil to leave. Amen. 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 You don't do it. That's why I stay there. Amen. I command Amen. you in Jesus' name. By the authority that's been invested in me, get out of here, Satan. Amen. 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 Because he knows, first of all, Christ is in your life. You got 
guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you hear what I'm saying? We don't use this salvation, this Holy Ghost, this power that we claim we got. What are yes. we doing? Huh? Why are we calling the name of Jesus? Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah. 28th verse. When he arrived at the other side of the region of the Galatians, two demon possessed men coming from the tombs met him. They were so violent that no one could pass that way. What do you want with us, son of God? They shouted, have you come here to torment us before the appointed time? Now, they're talking about the appointed time when Jesus come back. They're talking about that appointed time. Listen, the appointed time when Jesus is going to come take his throne, come back here on earth. That's what these demons were saying. they thinking like that. Have you come here, Jesus, to kick us to the curb? It's, it's not the point of time. They're trying to tell God about his time and what he should be doing. And they, they, they're telling him, it's, 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 you're trying to torture us before the point of time? We know when that time is, Lord. What are you trying to do it now? What's going on? He said to them, go! There's only one word red. In that red, that's in the 32nd verse. The word go! So they came out and went into the pit, and the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and 